Chapter 5 Review In the skin we found two basic layers, each of which contained specific types of tissue. In the epidermis we found a stratified squamous epithelium, whereas in the dermis we found areolar connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue. Familiarize yourself with the structures of the skin, like the dermal papillae that we find between the two layers, the accessory structures like hair and nails. If you pay attention to the structures of a hair follicle, you should notice that the same structures are found in a nail follicle, although we don't actually call it a nail follicle. One of the important bits of physiology in this chapter was wound repair. Make sure you don't get that confused with inflammation, which we discussed last week. The time frames of these two are completely different. One important homeostatic process that occurs in the skin is the production of vitamin D. Using the energy from UV light, epithelial cells can convert cholesterol into activated vitamin D, which later gets converted into the hormone calcitriol, which allows us to absorb calcium from our food. Without adequate vitamin D, the body cannot absorb enough calcium, and especially if the bones are growing, this can lead to weakened bones or a condition called rickets. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes of sun exposure every day to get enough UV light. Too much UV light exposure can increase the risk of skin cancers as well as decrease folic acid levels in the blood. In response to damage by UV light, keratinocytes will release the hormone MSH, which stimulates nearby melanocytes to increase their production of melanin. These melanocytes package melanin up into granules and then distribute those granules to nearby keratinocytes. This is a classic negative feedback mechanism. Increased UV exposure leads to increased melanin production which absorbs more UV light, which decreases UV exposure. If a keratinocyte acquires enough mutations to become cancerous before its normal 30-day lifespan is over, these skin cancers are rarely fatal because keratinocytes remain anchored to their neighbors by desmosomes. On the other hand, mutations to a melanocyte are very dangerous Melanocytes, recall, are migratory cells, and therefore when they form tumors, the tumors frequently metastasize. In addition to the melanin produced by melanocytes, which can either be pheomelanin or eumelanin, and found throughout the epidermis, our skin color is also determined by the amount of hemoglobin found in the dermis, which is a maroonish color, and the amount of carotene found in the epidermis, which is a small pigment molecule made by plants, which we acquire through our diet. When the skin is injured, it will quickly go through an inflammatory phase, as well as undergo hemostasis, wherein a blood clot forms. The blood clot reduces blood loss, as well as recruit nearby mesenchymal stem cells into the area these cells will undergo repair of the tissue. Epithelial cells can replace themselves fairly easily through mitosis, but the connective tissue that was injured will need to be replaced by these new stem cells. Initially, they differentiate into fibroblasts and lay down a different type of collagen called scar tissue, which has parallel collagen fibers that are cross-linked to one another. To aid in the repair process, we might also grow new blood vessels into the area to bring in more nutrients. This process is called angiogenesis and would lead to the formation of a reddish scar. Keep in mind the redness of the scar is due to new blood vessels, whereas the rapid redness seen with inflammation was due to vasodilation or increased blood flow of existing blood vessels. 
Over time, the remodeling phase can occur. Fibroblasts may replace some of the scar tissue with dense irregular connective tissue. And the blood vessels, which are no longer needed, can be removed by apoptosis, or programmed cell death. If the entire scar is not remodeled, then we would be left with a whitish appearing scar. That whiteness due to the fact that the scar tissue is a different type of tissue than we had here originally. These types of scars are different from striae or stretch marks. Stretch marks form when skin must grow rapidly. New epithelial tissue can be produced easily, but new connective tissue is a little bit more difficult. Even with recruitment of stem cells, often the fibroblasts cannot meet up with the demand for new connective tissue, and the density of the new tissue is less than the older tissue. Therefore, whatever is underneath this new area of skin is more visible. If this is a highly vascular or muscular area, the stretch mark will appear darker than neighboring skin. Whereas if this region of skin is over a lot of subcutaneous fat, then the stretch mark will appear lighter than the neighboring skin. Fingerprints or epithelial ridges exist in regions that have thick skin. Recall that thick skin really means thick epidermis. And in these areas, the thick epidermis lying on top of the dermal papillae becomes noticeable to the human eye. Palm creases, on the other hand, are regions where there is extra connective tissue anchoring the skin down to subcutaneous tissues such as muscle. Be sure to review hair follicles and nail matrix, both of which are living extensions of the epidermis, but the structures they make consist of dead epithelial cells. The color of hairs are determined by melanin produced by melanocytes found deep in the hair papilla. Sweat glands are also an extension of the epidermis. They can discharge fluids to the surface of the skin which help cool the body. Aiding in this, nearby papillary blood vessels can dilate to bring more blood close to the surface to help radiate heat away from the body. A defect in the nerves controlling these blood vessels leads to a particular type of birth defect called a vascular nevus or a portswine stain. There are other types of birth defects out there, but this is one that we've covered in class. Sebaceous glands are a second major type of gland found in the skin, and they produce oil which discharges onto a hair follicle or directly to the surface of the skin.